Hi there, my name is Emma Daniels. I work at Wageningen Environmental Research and I'm involved in the development of the Copernicus Climate Change Service. I'd like to give you an introduction to Copernicus and more detailed information about the Copernicus Climate Change Service. I'll introduce what's presently there, which you can expect in the coming years, and how that relates to the training you might be giving or taking in a blended format. First, I will briefly introduce Copernicus for those not familiar with it. Copernicus is the European Union's Earth Observation Program, or short, Europe's Eyes on Earth. It's a so-called public service framework that allows full, free and open access to all environmental monitoring data that are being gathered in the European Union. Copernicus started off as a remote sensing satellite observation program, but has evolved to become much broader than that. It covers past, present, with present I mean near real time, as well as future data. Future data of course depends entirely on model simulations, as there can be no observations yet. Let me shortly introduce the six different thematic information services within Copernicus. The Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service provides continuous data and information on atmospheric composition, for example, on air pollution. The Copernicus Marine Environment Monitoring Service provides regular and systematic reference information on the physical state, variability and dynamics of the ocean and marine ecosystems for the global ocean and the European regional seas. The Copernicus Land Monitoring Service provides geographical information on land cover and on variables related, for instance on the vegetation state or the water cycle. The Copernicus Emergency Management Service provides information to all actors involved in the management of natural disasters, man-made emergency situations and humanitarian crises. The Copernicus Service for Security Applications aims to support European Union policies by providing information in response to Europe's security challenges, for example about migration, border control and crisis prevention. And finally, the Copernicus Climate Change Service responds to environmental and social challenges associated with human-induced climate changes by giving access to information for monitoring and prediction climate change to support adaptation and mitigation. All thematic information services target both scientists as well as policymakers. Policymakers can make use of the Copernicus services at all levels, not only European, but also national or transnational level, and we even have users down to the municipal level. The Copernicus program is also very much targeted at businesses. By making all the data freely and openly accessible, companies can build their own, what we call, downstream developments on Copernicus data. This will generate new employment and business opportunities throughout. We also hope that citizens or civil society organizations, like non-governmental organizations, will also make use of the data services provided by Copernicus. It's very much the intention that the Copernicus program supports the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. When we talk about climate change, there's an obvious link between the Copernicus Climate Change Service to the climate action part of the Sustainable Development Goals. And for example, we have the Copernicus Marine Service that links directly to the Sustainable Development Goal of life below water. Also, the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service helps strengthen the capacity of all countries for early warning, risk reduction and management of national health risks.